Hi everybody, in this video render video, I'm going to take a look at how you can get up and running with Twinmotion 2025 for free without having to buy any modeling software. This is for users who want to maybe dabble in Twinmotion, maybe learn how to set up renders, but don't have access to Blender or 3D Studio Max or really maybe even just SketchUp. In other words, how you can get started building basic shapes into homes and then set up your render scene. All right. Go ahead and get into it. Okay, so Twinmotion. You can get Twinmotion available for free. All you need to do is set up an Epic Games account and then go ahead and download and install the software. Now, outside of the hardware requirements, this is available to everybody. It's free for everybody. You can see we've got different versions that you can download. For stability's sake, we're going to use 2024, which is the older but very stable release. Twinmotion 2025.1.1 is available now for everybody, and it is the newest version of Twinmotion. But for our purposes, you're just someone who wants to get started in Twinmotion, but you don't necessarily maybe have a background in 3D work, maybe you don't have access to SketchUp or Revit or 3D Studio Max, or a lot of the high-end sort of modeling softwares but you just want to get into Twinmotion and you want to get going. Or maybe you're a current Twinmotion user and sometimes you just can't be bothered to build or model or create an entire house and you just want to slap some shapes together and see how you can get up and running. So this home right here is the basic boxy outline of a sort of just kind of what we would call a modern home, for want of a better word. Strictly speaking, modern homes are not modern. They're more from like the, you know, the 1960s kind of onwards. But still, it's a basically, it's a very boxy shape where a lot of the detail is more or less just sort of implied. And a lot of the volume, the walls are sort of set back. So how do we go about sort of building something like this into in motion? Well, the secret of that is actually going to lie over here under the objects tab and primitives. You can see we have some basic modeling objects that we can work with. We've got simple things like boxes and planes. So how you could start with this is pretty simple. Maybe we drag out a plane, there it is, and pretend this is going to be the slab for our actual home. This will be the base concrete. We can come up to the tools at the top here and you know, kind of just go in here and mess around with the scale. So maybe I want to make this a little bit longer. Maybe I want to take this out a little bit. Okay, that's great. Then what we can do is drag out these plane 10 meters again, and we're going to start just rotating these. And you can see as we rotate them, we'll get access to the actual degree that we're rotating them based on. There we go, 90. And I can use the up and down keys just to really just start building our basic walls. So for example, we could come in here and place this wall over here, and then we'll notice maybe it doesn't line up perfectly. Use the scale tool again just to scale these. And so doing this will allow you to basically build up very basic shapes and forms and volumes. It's kind of the ZBrush equivalent of working with Dynamesh or Dynaspheres or just kind of sketching within SketchUp. Now, it's a lot slower than SketchUp because we don't really have the ability to draw lines and then just extrude faces out. But if you start putting enough of these together, you can actually build up pretty basic shapes. And I'm going to pause here and I'm going to show you the finished home that I've built using this technique. By the way, you can also add boxes here as well. And you can see these boxes will come in like this. We can scale them up or down. And maybe if we want, for example, decorative paneling, all we need to do is come in here, make this kind of fit, maybe simple wooden panel. Maybe I'll take it up to this height. And then once we select it, we can just hold down shift, drag out. Let's do this really quickly drag out just a little bit here and then say the number of times I want to duplicate this and click OK. And there we go. Now we've got some really nice wooden paneling that we can use. For windows, what we have to do, you can see I've got a sample window here. Drag this little guy out and you can see it is the same thing. It's a thin plane just with a glass material applied. Now to make your window look a little bit more like it's actually manufactured, we just did the same thing. This is the chamfer box. This is over here on the left. Chamfer box is nice because it's got nice chamfered edges. So when you do render this, you'll get that kind of nice highlight of light on the edges. And all we did was stretch these out, rotate them, and make it look like this glass panel, this big glass window pane 
it's actually set into the wall, maybe with a support element around it. Put enough of these things together and you can really make some very sort of simplified but nice modern homes, especially if you're just working on setting up, you know, a scene and just getting sort of dabbling within twin motion render. Let's take a look at a finished project. Here you can see we have done the same techniques using basic blocky box modeling, very similar to old style box modeling, which is sort of how I had to learn back in the day, aging myself. So you can see we have got our basic shape. This is all the sort of forms and volumes of the house blocked out. Now, if I was doing this again and hopefully doing it a lot better, I would very much make sure that I'm modeling off a reference. In this case, I didn't. And it, it, there's a lot of places that I would, bits of this that I would change quite a lot. So I would go to Pinterest and I would find some relatively basic modern style homes whose sort of footprint you can actually copy. We've built up the environment using assets from the Quixel Mega Scans. I'm not going to go through all of that here. And we've populated it with plants and greenery, also coming from Twin Motion. And so this entire scene is effectively a Twin Motion scene. Uh, if memory serves, I think maybe one or two of the trees came from other sources. But for the most part, this is what you can build up in Twin Motion without a 3D modeling program. You can also see we have a variety of different lighting environments. And all of these were rendered using the path tracer. Quite simply, what this means is you can get up and running in twin motion without having access to any other programs. You can start playing around with twin motion, learn the interface, learn how to set up nice renders, composition, materials, all of the good stuff and the lighting without having to use any other program. And I think that's a pretty low cost barrier for entry especially when you consider that twin motion is currently free for everybody. All right. Hopefully that helps get you up and running and I'll see you in the next video soon. Cheers.